we've seen a lot of outrages recently. Amazon, um, then Domino's. Um, I know when Domino's, when, when that link was posted, I, I wrote a blog post and I said, I, this is how it's going to play out. It's going to become a shitstorm on Twitter. And then uh, bloggers are going to write about it a day later. And then, you know, the New York Times will weigh in a week later with a 1,300-word piece. Mm -hmm. And the, like the, clockwork, the, yes. The cycle is accelerated. <laughs> it, it only took the New York Times right. three days. Uh, uh, but it's all very, very, yeah. I mean, it's like we've all seen. Everyone know, It's. I almost feel like everyone has their role to play. Everyone knows what the, gets in place. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, all right, let's go. We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, what's the next thing? <laughs> and then it all, it, it just, you know, goes off into the ether. Is there any, like, lasting lesson to be learned out of these things? I think if there is, it's just, you know, be a good brand beforehand and this stuff will bounce off of you a lot quicker than if you're not. You know, the fact that people generally have a fairly positive impression of Domino's. I mean, from, you know, okay, I, I, I grew up here I, in, in New York City. I can't think of it as pizza, but it's, you know, it, it seems to have a, a good reputation. They deliver on time. The product is fairly tasty and the stores are relatively clean. So, I think something like that's viewed as a blip. If it was a brand that people didn't really like and that had a negative reputation, I think it would would, would affect them a lot more because it would sort of be proof to people like, see, this is why I don't like them. Let's just talk about an accelerant. All this does is just accelerate bad news. So it's, it's literally like shooting lighter fluid at an already burning fire. And if you screw up, you screw up in a way that's not controlled, in a very uncontrolled way. And... You know, what happened with Domino's, that would never have happened, I mean, because you'd have to wait several months before that VHS tape surfaced, you know, sent anonymously to a local broadcast affiliate um, that would essentially feed it to other broadcast affiliates, and it would take weeks, and by the time it actually meant anything, it'd be old news. Now, it's like lightning fast. It's instant. It's instant publishing, and that's for good or bad, and, and it's just, again, it's just the way it is, and it's the speed at which things travel, and um, you just have to be... Brands need to be more self-conscious. Need to look at, look in the mirror and ask constantly, "How's my hair?" Yeah. Um, I, just, I sometimes did, did, wonder. Did, did, did so Domino's like brand tags yeah. change at all? I haven't checked actually. That'd be funny. <laughs> um, I just wonder whether how how new that really is. Like, I mean, <clears throat> there have been lots of big shit storms in the mm -hmm. past where you do ha have to do kind of disaster control, right? And you kind of get your PR people out there and you kind of like start doing it. And like certainly these things, you know, I, I totally agree that these things accelerate and I totally agree that, you know, the kind of the interesting thing about Twitter is that how many people who kind of are in the media are paying attention to right. it. And um, generally, you know, I mean, when you're in there, you think whatever you're reading is the thing that's really happening mm -hmm. in the world. You know what I mean? Like, we can only kind of see that which is around us. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess kind of disaster control is not a new thing, right? Lots mm -hmm. of people have, um, you know, their communications people in place exactly for that moment. And, like, you know, when you look at politicians, you know, I mean, that's how they operate, right? Like, they're ready at a moment's notice to go on the offensive if, if something happens. And, you know, I mean, not to say that, that these things haven't changed, and, and certainly, you know, I think there are opportunities to kind of um, head things off at the pass more, um, you know, I mean, but again, even that, good customer service can head something off at the pass. You know, I mean, uh, I had a great experience with um, Seamless Web recently, you know, I mean, like, it might have been something that would have really upset me, but their customer service dealt with it very well, and, and that was kind of it, but customer service isn't a new thing either, right? Like, I mean, they're using new channels, and this is actually one of the things I've been thinking about with Twitter is, is a lot of, uh, you know, we certainly, like everyone, I think, get kind of clients asking about Twitter and kind of curious to think about it, and one of the, the areas where I think it's it's slightly dangerous to jump in is that, you know, while it's kind of a nice idea if you're just, um, if you're kind of using it to surprise people, which a lot of brands start doing, yes. it quickly becomes a place where um, now people are kind of proactively reaching out to you, mm -hmm. and then it quickly becomes a place where they're yeah. expecting a response. And so are you ready to kind of be there um, with a response? Like, you know, at this point, if you Twitter at JetBlue, for instance, right, like, probably think that you're going to hear something back. And if you don't hear something back, like, is that the same as them not answering the phone on the customer service line? And if that's the case, you know, how are they thinking about that? And right. so, I mean, I think that these are all just kind of um, 
So you think the expectations might be too high for companies to actually follow through? I don't think they always are. I think it, it's just a danger um, that you can fall into the expectation trap. And, and once you do, and people are really expecting this to be not just kind of a place where you know you surprise and delight your customers with a coupon or whatever you're doing yeah, or some content, it becomes a place where you know they start reaching out to you and they expect a response. They think it's the same as picking up the phone. Well, and that's very true. Because one of the biggest problems, a lot of the early players, right, got the fact that you have to be able to back up whatever you're saying or doing there. So like when Dell set out to correct Dale Hell or even Comcast with this guy Frank Eliasson, they said, okay, we're actually going to give Frank the power to make stuff happen and like the people he's sending through are going to get red flagged and blue flagged and all sorts of priority so that he's actually able to do something. <clears throat> My fear is, to know this point, is a lot of the newer co companies coming in don't get that and they're going to set up some Twitter account and then somebody's going to complain about something. It's just going to sort of go the same way as that phone chain call where it gets, never gets followed up on and you know, so it winds up being worse for them than better. Well, that's why, I mean, big brands don't do little conversations very well. And understandably so. I mean, they don't need to. Um, they need to provide good experiences for their customers. But, I mean, that's why the best thing that those you know, brands can do is set up areas or empower consumers to have conversations either on their behalf or with each other um, and have them, you know, crowdsource whatever solution they need and let the brand, you know, figure out how to, you know, provide a platform for that. But, I mean, it is, you're right. I mean, you can't set expectations where you think that, you know, you have a problem with the Best Buy gift card that the Best Buy CEO is going to, you know, all of a sudden help you out. Um, it's just not rational. Things don't happen at that kind of scale. Like, those <coughs> kinds of personal relationships don't scale that way. Um, and, you know, so it's at the end of the day, I mean, Understanding social media as a brand doesn't necessarily mean having a conversation with your customer. And I think that's a, that's a real big you know misnomer out there in that um, it may very well be allowing your, your customers to have conversations with each other.